Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, an iOS 18.1 beta 1 release this week along with iOS 17.6 and iOS 18 public beta 2. We've had a very busy week of updates and there's even more to talk about with new features with iOS 18.1 beta 1, its groundbreaking update with Apple intelligence and much more. So we'll talk about that, we'll also talk about the experience, my experience and your experience based off the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video there's over 26,000 votes and 273 comments. I've read all of the comments to determine what the overall experience of all of these updates are like. Now let's talk about the new features. And the first thing is Apple intelligence in photos. This is something that I actually wasn't aware of during the what's new video. And if we go into photos in photos itself, if you go down to the memories section, if you actually have this added, you can actually create a memory movie with just a description. So it gives a few different examples. And if I say maybe cars over the past five years. And let's see what it does. It has one of the best animations we've seen. If we press send or go, watch the animation where different things start to pop in. It's sort of calculating everything, creating the memory for us, and it will actually even play music to it and then cycle through our different photos. So we'll give it just a moment here as it goes through, give it a little bit, and it doesn't typically take too long. However, this has been failing for some people, but let's see what it comes up with here. There it goes. And it's showing cruising through memories over the years, and it's going to go through different memories or different photos. So you'll see here a couple different ones, different cars, different things, maybe Lamborghinis. I'm not sure why this is a car. Oh, I guess it's panning down to a car showing driving a Rivian, showing a Ferrari couple different things here. So it's going through all the memories, showing through all of those different things throughout the years. So it's pretty good at this. Of course, it depends on your overall photo library, and this should improve over time. Now, one reason I've said that Apple intelligence is groundbreaking or sort of a game changer is because it's AI that gets out of the way. It doesn't seem to sort of take everything over. And what I mean by that is not just the photos memories area, but if we go into settings and then we go over to our focus modes, I showed this partly in a previous video, but found more to this. You'll see it has reduced interruptions. It's an all new focus mode that actually uses intelligence on the device to determine if something may or may not be important or something that you need to see right away. You can of course allow exceptions for this, but the, another thing I've found is if we go into do not disturb, we even have intelligent breakthrough and silencing here. So it can be intelligent within different modes themselves. So if we go into driving again, we have the option for it in all of these different modes. This is something probably one of my favorite features where it sort of halts things that it thinks you probably don't need to see right now, or maybe respond to, it would actually notify you as it learns how you actually use your phone. So to me, that's something that's a little bit groundbreaking and one way that AI sort of works seamlessly and is for the rest of us, like Apple says. Now, again, one of the new things has to do with writing tools. And I found that this actually works anywhere, even in third party apps. So if we go into maybe craft that I use for all of my notes here, and these are my notes for iOS 17.6 when it released. If we go and maybe select something here, so we could select maybe, let's select this. We can select anything within here, and then we can actually scroll over and we have the writing tools right within third-party apps as well. So we can have it proofread, rewrite, rewrite it as friendly, professional, or concise even. And it works again in these third-party apps. So this is something that's going to be great and definitely replace different apps for other people. Something else that's been found with Apple intelligence is it won't work properly on things such as swear words or foul words. So if I type a few here and I'll just blur them out, I have a few words I've actually blurred out and it says writing tools was not designed to handle this type of content. Quality may vary. So that's something that it won't actually correct and left alone. Another thing they've updated has to do with Apple CarPlay. It has the new Siri design carried across to it as well. If we press and hold here, you'll see that it surrounds everything. And as I speak, it sort of has a waveform that goes around the overall content of the entire screen. So that looks really nice. And then again, we can ask it a question. What's the weather right now? And then it gives the weather in the current condition. So that's just the new look for it to go along with the updates to CarPlay as well. Another change I've noticed that they've updated has to do with the actual voice of Siri. It seems like it's a little bit different this time around, sort of more natural like chat GPT. So let's see if we can hear that. What's the weather tomorrow? Looks like rain tomorrow. 
it sort of has a more natural sound to it. Let's try again. What are the Olympic results so far? I found this on the web. And so it sort of has different voice inflection. It sounds a little bit different. And depending on what you're actually asking can make it sound very different overall. So let me know if you've been using this and experienced the same thing. When you're using Spotlight and maybe you're typing something such as open an app or open collections, sometimes it can give different suggestions this time around. You can see that here with photos. And my friend Steve Mosier found that it looks a little different on Mac as well. So you'll see here that he posted where it looks a little different when maybe you're trying to open an application there. You Using Spotlight. Before we talk about a few more features, I wanted to mention something about accessibility. iOS 18 is also supposed to bring improvements to voice control for accessibility users. However, it looks like some of these features may be delayed. Friend of the channel, Colin Hughes, has made me aware that the new custom vocabulary feature will not be available in the current update. It will be available in a future update. So voice control, if you're using this, you can actually add your own vocabulary create different words that trigger different things throughout the operating system. And it looks like this won't be available at the launch. It's a bit disappointing for those who are looking forward to this feature. And so far it's not even available on Mac OS Sequoia. So it looks like it's something coming a little bit later where you can add sort of your own custom vocabulary. So it recognizes that information or your voice and then sort of does something throughout the OS. So that looks like it's going to be a little bit later. Some of those features may not be available right away. Another feature that won't be available right away is the integration with ChatGPT. During the recent earnings call with Apple, Tim Cook was actually asked about it and he said it would be available by the end of the calendar year. So that's something we haven't seen yet and should be coming a little bit later. Now, something to go along with one of my favorite features has to do with that focus mode I mentioned earlier, where we have reduce interruptions. Not only does this seem to work really well, it seems to work in places I wasn't expecting. So we get specific sort of notifications that go along with this. And I took some screenshots to show you what they look like. They highlight and they look pretty great. So if you have one and you unlock your phone, it sort of highlights it and says this may be important. And then also you'll get something else, maybe rain stopping soon. And it's saying maybe important. This also carries across to mail as well. And within the mail application, you'll see here, we have sort of summaries of each one of these and they show up on the lock screen as well. And then to go along with that, I was able to capture this earlier where it has priority here, where it's sort of looking through my email, giving me the one it thinks is the priority. So this is really great. It doesn't have the new interface yet to go along with it, but this is definitely something that I really appreciate. We can also have smart replies and messages as well, and those seem to work okay, but they're definitely a little buggy. Now, one thing I did want to mention for those of you wanting to try out Apple intelligence is how to activate that. If you're outside the United States, you still need to have an iPhone 15 pro or 15 pro max, but you can activate that by changing your region, your language to English us in the United States, and then also your Siri language as well. Then it will typically show up and you'll have the option to go into Apple intelligence and Siri. So make sure your language and everything else is set up as English United States. And the same is true for Siri along with your region that typically allows that to show up. But again, you have to have a supported device. It will work on supported iPads with an M1 or later as well, and Macs to go along with that. Additionally, to go along with iOS 17.6, one of the updates Apple has added, which isn't really related to the update specifically, but has to do with pushing it server side, is Apple has added locations for SOS via satellite in Japan. So that should now work properly. So if you actually are in Japan and you have a phone that supports it, you should be able to access emergency SOS via satellite. Now you should have the demo there and it should work for you. If you've tried this out, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Something else they've also enabled in iOS 17.6, as well as iOS 18 has to do with Apple wallet. And within Apple wallet, Apple has added the Apple account card support in Australia and Canada. So this should now be available. If you actually are using Apple wallet, iOS 18 beta five and public beta three, I would expect as soon as this coming week, maybe the fifth or sixth of August. That's typically what I would expect. And that's what we would see as far as the next release is sort of a weekly schedule until we get to the final release of iOS 18 in mid September. We're only about a month or so away from seeing iPhone 16 iOS 18 released to the public a month and a couple weeks. Also, we could see iOS 18.1 public beta or iOS 18.1 beta two. However, we don't really know if that's going to be a weekly schedule or not. There's also been hints of iOS 17.6.1 and 17.7. However, I don't think Apple's going to focus much on that unless they need to push security updates.
As far as the iOS 17 experience with iOS 17.6, well, there's mostly good things to say. Many people have provided great feedback and there's only a couple things that aren't working properly for some people. A couple people mentioned that the clock widget, so if you're using the actual clock widget here, with the clock widget added, some people are saying that the time on the clock widget is a little bit behind the time on the actual iPhone itself. So that could be a problem for some people. And also there was some stuttering issues in iOS 17.6 betas that they had mostly fixed, but occasionally some people are seeing that reoccur. So if you are having that, I would recommend rebooting your phone. But for the most part, people are saying iOS 17.6 is great as well as battery with 17.6. So if we take a look at that, this was sent in by Cameron on an iPhone 15 pro max with hundred percent battery health. And he actually had seven hours and 31 minutes and used about 75 to 80% of his battery. It's easily getting him through a day and no issues whatsoever. So it seems to be much better even than the RC versions for him. So that's great news. We'll take a look at iOS 18 battery in just a moment. When it comes to iOS 18 beta four re-release or iOS 18 public beta two, they're the same thing. They're fairly stable given that it's an early beta, but there's still some issues here and there things with loading, sometimes being slow or stuttering, sometimes just locking up. That's what I had before. However, some people were having issues with connectivity with Wi-Fi, and that seems to be related to that private relay outage. So if you're using private relay, if we go into my Apple account here, if you were using private relay, this was causing all sorts of issues this past week, including just not being able to get to different websites. I turned it off for a few days until they resolved it. It should be resolved now, but if you ever find yourself in a situation where it just won't work properly, try turning this off for a day, see if it fixes it. But I do really appreciate having it there. iOS 18.1 beta one though is similar, but has a few additional issues. Audio playback keeps stopping for many. So sometimes in maps or Google, just in general, it will stop after it announces a turn or just sometimes when you wake it up, it will do the same thing. So there's definitely some issues there. Some have reported issues with cellular data. However, again, that could be related to private relay. The pro wallpaper is still missing. If we scroll down, you'll see the pro iPhone wallpaper is just not there and they're lacking quite a bit. I'd hoped they'd bring back a ton of different wallpaper, but so far they haven't done that. Any additional issues though seem to be more performance related where it's just not 100% yet, but it is again an early beta. The wallpaper dimming bug is still there where it desaturates. That's not a major bug, but just more of an annoyance. As far as battery life though, iOS 18 beta four re-release and iOS 18.1 beta one are basically the same for me. If we go into settings and we go to battery, in battery health, you'll see I'm down to 92% with 264 cycles. And if we take a look at the last 10 days, yesterday I had two hours and 55 minutes of screen active time, eight hours and 28 minutes of screen idle time, and used about 50% of my battery. It is getting me mostly through the day, but I still have some issues with it. If we go back to previous versions, again, about four to five hours of usage for me, it's not great. It definitely needs to be plugged in or put on some sort of charger throughout the day to last me until the end of the day. So it definitely could use some improvement there. When it comes to performance overall, well, it hasn't locked up on me at all, but it does have some odd issues here and there. Things like ProMotion are nice and smooth, and this carries across to older devices as well. General performance is okay. If we go into things like music, you'll see loading is okay, scrolling's fine. It works okay, but there's still some issues here and there. Opening the camera's nice and fast, but I really haven't experienced anything different other than adding maybe some additional heat because it's processing a lot with Apple intelligence. So the overall processor right now is nice and cool, and I'll show you that briefly, but the processor itself is nice and cool, but it's not anything like it was with maybe 17.6. And with iOS 18.1 beta one at the hottest point, we're at about 91 to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. On 17.6 at the hottest point, we're at about 87 and a half degrees. And again, on iOS 18.1 beta one, that's about 34 degrees Celsius. On 17.6, we're about 32 degrees Celsius. So still a little bit warm. It's nothing that you couldn't use regularly, but if you're in a really hot environment, it may pose a problem. Now I ran benchmarks on both iOS 17.6 and iOS 18.1 beta one, and you can see the scores here. On 17.6, we had 2,961 
for single core with 7,323 for multi-core. On iOS 18.1 beta 1, they've been a little bit lower with iOS 18. We had 2,762 for single core, 6,650 for multi-core. So overall, it's definitely a little bit slower, but very much in, in line with what we had with previous betas. So you can see that here. But in general, I think it's performing well, but the best performing is on iOS 17.6 so far. That doesn't surprise me as it's not in beta. Now, as far as overall things you had to say, as far as the experience, let's take a look at some of your comments. Quad Rider Honda said, I've been using 17.6 RC for a week and went to 17.6 public release. And the public release with the newer build seems a lot better. I noticed battery improved and also performance seems to be great and snappy. Also, the phone is staying nice and cool. Love your videos, Aaron. By the way, I'm using a 15 Pro Max. Dr. Shrimp Puerto Rico said, I'm on iOS 17.6. Battery life has significantly significantly increased coming from 17.5.1. Currently getting around 11 hours of screen active and two hours of screen idle time using 100% of my battery on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is insane. Tech like Leon said, hi Aaron, I'm using iOS 17.6 on my iPhone 13. It's great. Battery life is good and performance is still great. The alarm bug seems to be fixed. The only bug which still persists is the standby bug. I still can't change the colors of the different styles. The only style I can edit is the full screen colored version of the clocks, the photos, and the widgets. I already tried rebooting the device or soft resetting it. The issue is still there. Do you have any idea how to fix it? Most people say it's actually resolved, so I don't at this point. Papa Joker said, I'm running iOS 18.4.5 on my 10s Max. I know, I know I should upgrade, but I'm having a great experience on this device. No lagging, screen stuttering. Battery life is great. What can I expect? It's very smooth. I just replaced it some months ago, so battery is at 100%. So I think you guys would need to know the experience of this outdated phone is like operating at full capacity. I hope this post makes it into the video. Thanks, Aaron. And Voss4302 said, The 18.0 betas, both public beta 2 and beta 4.5, seem very stable and largely without bugs. There is one very annoying bug in the Shortcuts app when searching for Apple Notes, which forgets that tags exist. Since K is shortcuts for filing my notes, this is super annoying. The same thing happened in 16 and 17 and was only solved in the point three version. Battery life seems normal. So that's everything with the latest betas. I'm looking forward to iOS 18.1 beta 2 and hopefully some more of those new updates with Apple intelligence, maybe with the image playground and other things. And of course, I'm looking forward to iOS 18 beta 5 as well. Hopefully Apple really focuses on stability, gets everything right before the public release. But let me know your experience in the comments below and what you love most about Apple intelligence. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.